the Hebrews or the Jewish people were henotheistic, not monotheistic. Henotheistic means picking one God from a group, picking one from a group. So we, for, for illustration, say you have 15 gods standing in a row, and you pick one particular god to be your god, and you make a contract with that god, and he will become your god, and you will become his follower. Now you are said to be the worshiper of one god. Well, in a point of fact, yes, you are the worshiper of one god, but there is not one god, there's 15. You yes. just picked one. Right. Therefore, you are not the worshiper of a monotheistic the worshiper of one god. You're a henotheistic, meaning you picked one from a group. Quite right. And so once you understand that, that, the, that the Hebrew religion is a, is a henotheistic, meaning they have picked one god from a group, well, now you need to understand what the word God means then, because God is simply dog spelled backwards in English. And this is why church teachings are called dogma. You need to really understand religion and theology yep. and where it comes from, because the very word theo is, in Greek is a word for God. God is theo in Greek, and so therefore the study of God is the study of theo. It's called theology. And theology, or the study of God, gives us our word theater. So the theater gives us a place to worship God. And that's why we have today motion pictures theater. And you need to understand the connections between the ancient occult world of words and terms and in relation to this theo and theology and theater, you need to understand that the white man's world, the world of the white man was Europe, northeast, west, and south of Europe. Incidentally, northeast, west, and south is N-E-W-S. That's where we get the word news. Comes to anything comes from the northeast, west, or south is news. But if you go back to Europe and the, the home of the white man, so to speak, you will find that even a thousand years before the Roman Empire, Europe had a very highly developed civilization of power in Europe. Uh, it was called a Druidic power, Druids. They were called Celtic or Celtic Druids. And the Druids were the earliest uh, uh, Europeans, even before the Roman Empire, the Druids existed. Quite right. The Druids were the doctors, the lawyers, the, the, the priests. They were the powers of, the, of Europe. They're still around today in Europe, uh, the Druids. Well, America is a Druid country because it came from Europe. So if you don't understand the United States being a Druid country and Druidic religion and Druidic symbols, then you don't know anything about your country. You need to wake up and find out where America came from. Now, one of the most important symbols in the old ancient Druid system in Europe, from which where we came, one of the most ancient port, uh, symbols in that ancient Druid establishment was a magic wand, like Merlin the magician with his magic wand. Yes. And the orchestra leaders in the great uh, halls of music, the orchestra leader has a magic wand. Yes. And when he waves that magic wand, you had better play the tune of his magic wand. You better follow what he is directing you to play, not what you want to play. He's the director. Quite right. And he's directing you with a magic wand, like Merlin the Magician. He's a magical presence before the orchestra. And so magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree. It's made out of Hollywood. And once you understand that the whole Druidic world system of America is based on Hollywood and the whole motion picture entertainment educational system we call Hollywood is a Druidic system promoting a Druidic uh, philosophy, a Druidic government, religion, banking. You just need to wake up and find out the whole world does not work the way you think it does. The entire right. world is operating on an occult or hidden foundation, and unless and until you find out how this stuff works, you're just going to be crawling on your knees from one day to the next trying to figure out 
how this world works, and you will never be told, you will never, as I said, the powers that be feel, feel that this kind of knowledge is on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. All you need to do is be afraid of the police, be afraid of the courts, be frightened of the powers that are over you, and just pay your bills and do what you're supposed to do and stay all the way and don't act smart and don't go reading too many books and getting too smart. And make sure you, so and make sure you phone like in. Everybody else and put, go play ball. And make sure you phone in to vote on American Idol, right? Yeah, and vote on American Idol and watch the dancers and famous dancers, and that's all you need to know. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, at 22 after the hour, you're listening to The Crimson Pill with Antonin Fiore and our special guest today, Mr. Jordan Maxwell. Mr. Maxwell, I find in having these types of conversations with many people that after about five minutes, roughly, and oftentimes not nearly that long, the eyes glaze over, And I think part of the reason for that is cognitive dissonance, as we talked about before. And I think also part of it is that it's in an an era that we live in today where we are bombarded by information from all sources at all times, I think many people, almost as a defense mechanism, we partition part of our mind and, and we treat things in a very rudimentary fashion just to help us be able to cope. I'll give you an example. Uh, sometimes if you're talking about biblical uh, you know, uh, issues or matters and some of the things we've actually talked about in the last few minutes, sometimes folks just create a partition in their mind that these are events and these are things that occurred in something that they generically label biblical times, you know, long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. And, they, and they fail to realize the significance and the implications that those types of issues hold in our everyday life today. I'd like to give one quick teaser before I come back to you with another question. Most Americans wouldn't realize that our entire space program is literally built upon the framework of occult knowledge, underground streams of knowledge, and also the ritual practice and observance of dates stellar and uh, astronomical configurations in the sky, and literally, not just from the inception of our space program, our trip to the moon, but even to this very day, there are no end to the connections of occult symbolism and meanings involved, even in something like that. Boy, that's that's an understatement of the year. Yeah. I know uh, quite a few astronauts personally, and I I know uh, some of the top physicists at NASA uh, who are personal friends of mine, you, you're absolutely right. Most people don't know that NASA depends every day on Hindu mathematics. All of NASA operates on what is called Hindu math. And uh, you'd be surprised how many Hindu mathematicians are the brain works behind NASA. Mm. And where did NASA come from? That's a whole, uh, you know, people say, well, that's NASA. Uh, <clears throat> National Aeronautics Space Administration. No, go back and do your homework and find out where NASA comes from, where this whole idea of the space program comes from. Um, boy, I mean, I have to, that, that's a whole story in itself when you get into, <laughs> uh, what was his name, Alistair Crowley, the great yes. magician of England. Yes, and L. as L. well as... Hubbard of Scientology. As well and, as when we hear uh, when we hear the Hubbard term from Scientology, Alistair Crowley, the, when we hear the, the term British NASA's magician, Jet Propulsion and, Laboratory, uh, for example, and Jack L. Parsons. Jack L. Parsons uh, was a rocketeer. He was into rockets many many years ago. He was one of the original rocketeers who believed in space flight and, and rockets and all that. And he worked on uh, solid fuels for rockets and all kinds of great uh, stuff that he was into in rocketry. Everyone knows the, the history of Jack L. Parsons and his uh, work with uh, space. And so he he was, um, at one time, he had a big um, warehouse, a set of warehouses up here in uh, Pasadena in Southern California. And it was that area where he was uh, experimenting with rockets and, and explosives and all that was many years ago in Pasadena. And uh, that area was known as Jack L. Parsons' lab. 
and uh, and Jack L. Parsons, who was working with uh, rockets and and uh, all that kind of thing, had two very close friends: L. Ron Hubbard of Scientology, and Alistair Crowley from uh, England, the great satanic master, who himself called himself the Beast, the master of the Beast of 666, the great uh, satanic master in England, Alistair Crowley. So Alistair Crowley, with uh, with his uh, close friend L. Ron Hubbard of Scientology, and uh, and uh, Jack L. Parsons, became a uh, a triumvirate. They became a threesome, and they began working on the idea that uh, that there were aliens out in space or demonic spirits or whatever you want to call them, but other living entities out there in space that man could uh, connect to and learn from and communicate with and learn from. So L. Ron Hubbard, Scientology, Alistair Crowley from England, the great master satanic magician, <clears throat> and, uh, and, uh, and Jack L. Parsons uh, began to formulate some kind of an, of, a, of an arrangement where they could, through sexual magic, through all kinds of occult rituals, not only develop space travel, but they could develop communication with the dark side. They could communicate with the the spirits, with the aliens, with the uh, entities of other worlds. And so that's what Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard's all about. That's right. what right. Uh, that's what NASA's all about. But what people don't know is that uh, that um, uh, Jack L. Parsons' lab became known today. Jet Propulsion Lab. No, not Jet Propulsion. JPL was Jack Parsons' lab. So JPL today is based on occult magic, sexual magic, child sacrifice, all kinds of dark, evil stuff that was developed in England and here in America to connect mankind with the demonic forces, with the aliens, with the aliens, with all kinds of secret societies, fraternal orders, doing all kinds of sexual rituals up in Pasadena. There's a whole hell of a story here that people just don't know. How deep I the mean, rabbit hole goes, Mr. Maxwell. People are ill-informed and unaware that when they're looking at NASA sending space shuttles into, into space, they have no idea of the world where this stuff has come from and how the Nazis, after... World War II were brought over here under uh, something called Operation Paperclip when the Vatican, but the Holy Father, the Pope in Rome, gave all the top Nazis new identification, gave them money, gave them safe passage so that the Nazis could come over to America and hook up with J Jack L. Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard and Alistair Crowley and continue their great work of connecting the human race with uh, with the demonic, with the aliens, with other world entities. I'm just telling you the whole world is not what you think it is. And that's why today all over the earth there's violence, bloodshed, wars, gang killings, all kinds of depravity on the earth because the very foundations of the Western civilization you don't understand at all. This Quite thing right. is very dark, it's very deep, and it's very frightening, and that's why most people can't wrap their heads around what's really going on here. You better find out what the U.S. government really is and what Quite NASA right. really is and who runs the banks in point of fact and what is really going on in churches, where synagogues really come from. I'm just telling you, you'd better wake up and find out and smell the roses about how the world really works. Quite right, and just so. Folks, we're joined by internationally recognized author and lecturer Jordan Maxwell. We've been talking for a few moments about the space program, NASA, its occult underpinnings the very personalities and folks who brought about NASA's rise in our culture, its prominence, its fame, Werner von Braun, J. 